Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'm going to share with you case number 30 in the best way to do cataract surgery series. This is a white cataract, and I'm going to use tripan blue. And I'm going to show and illustrate mechanical fracturing techniques, double chop, cross chop, using the chopper and the FACO tip, using mechanical fracturing forces, and leveraging that in order to reduce ultrasonic energy, reduce torsional stress on the zonules. And with these techniques, I've noticed a reduction in complications, reduced ultrasonic energy, and clearer corneas. I'm going to use a corneal mark to help me center and size my rexus, and then using a cotton tip, I'm going to turn the eye and then make my paracentesis incision parallel to the iris plane. This creates a nice corneal shelf, which will allow me to make a self-sealing corneal incision. I'm injecting some intracameral lidocaine, and then I'm injecting some intracameral air, and then I'm going to paint the anterior capsular surface with a tripan blue. You can see that I'm dripping the tripan blue and painting it using the cannula almost like a paint roller. I prefer doing it this way rather than just filling the entire chamber with the tripan blue. I want to minimize exposure to the corneal endothelium and that bubble really helps tamponade the dye onto the anterior capsular surface. I'm injecting some dispersive viscoelastic and trying to push out the bubble at the same time. And then I do my triplanar corneal incision I make a vertical groove, go into the groove with the blade, tunnel through the cornea, and then dive down and then enter. And this is a triplanar corneal incision. I'm a little concerned about the zonule with these cases, so go ahead and use this histotome, start my rexus, and then using my forceps, I'm going to go around circumferentially. I'm following the corneal marks, which will help me to center and size the rexus. And I'm grabbing intermittently, grabbing at the edge of the flap going around a few clock hours and then re-grabbing, making sure that my diameter and size and shape are exactly where I want it to be. I'm going to remove the flap and then burp a little viscoelastic. I'm going to do my Capsular fornix hydrodissection technique. I place the cannula out to the contralateral equator underneath the rexus edge, turn the cannula tip down in the capsular fornix, get a nice fluid wave, decompress on the left side, freeing up a little bit of the anterior capsular rexus edge, and then going to the right side and turning the tip downward, you can see the lens spins very nicely. We start the phaco, lift the incision with a chopper with irrigation off, go in with the phaco tip, and then start to remove the surface epinuclear material, place the chopper out to the equator, place the phaco tip vertically sub-incisionally, bring both instruments together, crushing the meat of the lens together, and this is the double chop maneuver, crushing the lens completely in half. I'm separating it a little bit, teasing it apart with the chopper, going out to the contralateral equator with the chopper, pulling towards the phaco tip centrally, and this crushes the right hemineucleus, and this is a cross chop maneuver. And begin the emulsification. I lift the first quadrant out of the bag using the vacuum, and then I'm crushing the lens material between the chopper and the phaco tip, trying to utilize mechanical fracturing forces to crush the lens. Before doing that, I'm switching to the dense cataract mode, and then I start to emulsify the lens. This has a little bit more longitudinal energy. I typically only have torsional energy with my standard technique, but this one adds a little bit of longitudinal for a little bit more emulsification power. I go with the chopper out in the cross chop maneuver format, pulling centrally to crush the second quadrant against the phaco tip, and then begin to emulsify that second quadrant once the pieces are small enough into smaller bite-sized pieces. I'm rotating the second hemineucleus in front of me very carefully and slowly, placing the chopper out to the equator, into the capsular fornix, placing the phaco tip deep, and then crushing the chopper against the phaco tip. And then I'm going and doing the same maneuver on the third quadrant with the chopper out to the equator, pulling it towards the phaco tip and crushing that third quadrant. Now you can see that third quadrant is in smaller pieces, placing the chopper around the lens piece, crushing it against the phaco tip, and I'm beginning to start emulsifying the lens material. This is a remainder piece of that third quadrant. I'm maneuvering the lens piece with the vacuum and then crushing the lens, crushing the lens using the chopper against the phaco tip. 
This is the last quadrant, placing the chopper out to the equator again, getting around the lens, pulling it towards the phaco tip, crushing the lens and dividing it in half. And I'm placing the chopper around that fragment again, I'm just trying to be very careful, making sure I only get the lens material and not the bag, I'm going around the lens material, crushing the chopper against the phaco tip once again. using a little bit of vacuum to orient the piece on the tip and then crushing it with the chopper again. Getting around that final fragment, placing the chopper around the lens material, crushing the lens material against the phaco tip, making sure the lens pieces are completely divided and then using the high vacuum and ultrasonic energy to remove the lens pieces. And this is the final fragment. You wanna be very careful I'm using mechanical fracturing forces to crush the lens pieces, but once they're small enough, I'm making sure that chopper is deep in the bag so that posterior capsule does not come forward. You always want to use the chopper or second instrument deep in the bag to protect the posterior capsule from the phaco tip. I'm seeing a little bit of fluid at my paracentesis, so I'm using the chopper to just pull down at the limbus and pulling that conjunctiva away. I also notice I have a little bit of epinuca material. I was gonna to switch to the INA, but I realized it might be better just to use a FACO. I'm using the cannula to protect the bag, but then I noticed, hey, maybe I can mobilize that sub-incisional epinuca material with the cannula. So I'm pushing the BSS into the capsular fornix, almost trying to do a little bit of more hydrodissection of that epinuca material. And lo and behold, it starts to be mobilized and I'm removing the epinuc material with the phaco tip and again using the cannula to protect the posterior capsule. I begin the INA and I'm removing the cortical material circumferentially. You can see there's not much cortical material. I'm essentially polishing the anterior capsule and removing any potential cortical material that's there. And then I switch to the polish mode once I have all the lens material out and just continuing more polishing of the posterior capsular surface. I'm pushing BSS into the subincisional capsular fornix space just to see if there's any cortical material left. And lo and behold, as I push, you can see there's a little bit of cortical material that's liberated from the subincisional space. I'm injecting some cohesive viscoelastic to expand the capsular bag. And then I'm going to start to polish underneath the anterior capsule rim, first on the left side, making sure I'm removing any potential cortical material as well as lens epithelial cells. And I do the same thing on the right side. With these dense lenses, I prefer putting in a three-piece lens because I am afraid that there might be more zonulopathy. So I'm going to use this blade to widen the incision to accommodate the injector for the three-piece lens. I'm going to go ahead and inject the three-piece lens, bevel down, go in. And once I go in, I'm going to turn the bevel clockwise 90 degrees facing the left side. The haptic comes out planar, and then I rotate the barrel 90 degrees counterclockwise to make sure the optic comes out flat and make sure the trailing haptic is facing to the right. I use a Maltzman to dial the trailing haptic into the bag, and I rotate the lens 90 degrees. I'm going to use the INE handpiece to first go underneath the lens because of the three-piece lens you can see very clearly that both haptics are in the bag i'm removing any viscoelastic in the bag as well as underneath the lens first and then i'm removing the viscoelastic in the anterior chamber you can see that the cornea is nice and clear and the lens is well centered in the capsular bag with 360 degrees overlap of the rexus and then I hydrate my incisions. So you can see this is a dense white cataract. You can see I used a tripan blue painting the anterior capsular surface. I used a double chop cross chop mechanical fracturing forces to very carefully and methodically crush the lens pieces into small bite sized pieces. I'm using the chopper and leveraging it, pulling lens pieces out of the bag rather than applying torsional stress on the zonules. And you can see the CDE, although this is a pretty dense lens, 
I was able to still keep it at a minimum. I believe doing cataract surgery this way is really the most versatile way to perform lens disassembly. And in my experience, this reduces risk for complications and also allows me to have clearer corneas postoperatively and increases my patient satisfaction. So I hope this was helpful to you. Please like and subscribe, and I thank you for your attention.